welcome to Alpha Military TV. Thanks very much for tuning in once again. My name is Richard Saunders. Now, as I always do, I want to say a very heartfelt thank you to everyone who subscribes to the channel and invite anyone who has found us perhaps for the first time to hit the subscribe button as well. And down below, you'll find some useful links uh, to our, uh, our shop um, where we sell a whole bunch of air gunning accessories and also to uh, some Amazon pages for some products that I use on a regular basis. And also if you check out our website www.alphamilitaria.com you'll find a whole bunch of articles, reviews um, on air gunning topics. And finally, before we get to the main part of this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to a new Facebook uh, group called The Air Gun Factory. Uh, just recently set up by a bunch of enthusiasts and there's some really great interesting topics on there, lots of good photographs, lots of good chat as well. So if you get an opportunity, check them out too. But the focus of this video today is to talk about the Umrex Walther Rain. And what we'll do is we'll run through the rifle from back to front, zoom in on some of the key features, and then I'll take it down the range and put some pellets through it. So the Walther Rain is obviously it's a bullpup rifle. Um, it retails in the UK for £799.95, so it's a little bit more expensive. You couldn't really call this an entry-level rifle um, at all, but it's certainly not the mega bucks money of some of the more expensive rifles at the top end. So it kind of sits in that sort of mid mid price level, um, and it's pretty good value for money, I have to say. Um, now it is. Um, <clears throat> This is the, uh, I don't know if this is the Mark 1, but the, the, current, the current shipping model is called the uh, Rain M2. Um, and from what I can tell, the difference between this version, which is actually my rifle, and the M2 is very, very small. I think there might be something to do with the shrouding. I think the M2 has a muzzle brake on it, um, but that seems to be pretty much it. The, only, the one thing I would say is that apparently um, UK shipping versions have this raised uh, 11 meter dovetail rail, whereas non UK versions apparently have a raised uh, Picatinny rail. Now, as I said, this is my rifle, um, and as you can see, I fitted a, a PARD NV008 to this rifle, and I had to put on a, a, a Picatinny accessory adapter on here um, because the mount that comes with the PARD is a, is a Picatinny mount. Um, but this is now my absolute go-to rat shooting uh, rig. It really is. It's, the rifle is compact. The scope allows me to uh, to shoot in the dark because it's an, an IR scope. I also, I also use it from a, a high to shoot uh, squirrels as well. Um, again, with the pard uh, because it performs really, really well in daylight as well. And I'm absolutely falling in love with this setup. Um, now one of the main reasons I like this is because it has this, you can't get away from the fact um, that the rain has a black plastic stock, or if you want to be kind, a black polymer stock. Um, but it is plastic, you know, there's no two ways about it. And that puts a lot of people off for some reason, because I'm not quite sure why, because the, the quality of the plastic is very, very good. It is so tough and durable, it's untrue. I swapped to this because I got fed up smashing my wooden stock rifles on fire machines um, in, in the dark. So I take this now and it's so tough you could knock, knock nails into a wall with it. Really, really tough and durable. And, and this, um, this black plastic gives the rifle um, its uh, lightness. This only weighs uh, two and a half kilos and it measures 687 millimeters long. Um, now that doesn't include a silencer and you will want to put a silencer on this rifle because it does go off with a bit of a crack. Um, <clears throat> but you know, the overall effect is very light, very compact, very, very handy. Um, and something you can carry around confined environments very, very easily. And the stock also is completely ambidextrous too. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the rifle from back to front we we'll talk about the main features, then we'll do the usual zoom in, then take it down the range for a few shots. So starting at the back of the rifle then, you have this um, rubber, quite hard rubber and plastic um, butt pad. There's no adjustment in it at all. 
Um, it's con it has some um, some texture on the back to stop it slipping in your shoulder, uh, and it's curved and it's very comfortable um, in the shoulder as well. Now, forward of that, you have the breech. Um, so the magazine goes in uh, from either side. So this is this talks to this um, ambidextrous feature on the rifle. So you can put the magazine um, in from this side if you're right-handed, or it will, it will simply turn around and slot in from the other side if you're left-handed. You know, really simple, um, you know, and it makes this a genuinely ambidextrous rifle. There's a very large cutout here for the thumb hole. It will accommodate the biggest of hands. And the pistol grip is actually quite, uh, quite steep and has some sort of um, swirly, checkering molded into it which makes it nice and grippy as well um, now forward of that is obviously is, is the uh, the trigger guard which is plastic it's part of the molding and the trigger is plastic too don't let that upset you i know a lot of people will throw their hands up in horror at the thought of a plastic trigger must admit i did initially as well um, but it's very very comfortable it's not flimsy in any kind of way at all um, it's two two stages now you will have to remove the stock to to um, to make those adjustments, but in all honesty, out of the box, I found this trigger absolutely fine. The, the first stage is nice and light, comes up to a very abrupt halt for the second stage, and then it lets off very predictably and very crisply as well. Up here, there is a safety catch. Um, it's far enough away from the trigger to stop me moaning, and it's nice and convenient for your trigger finger. You push it from the left through to the right to make the gun safe. And then before you take a shot, if you're right-handed, you push it through uh, from the right to the left uh, to make the gun uh, live. I think I'm right in saying that it's the only non-ambidextrous um, feature on this rifle. You can't change this to, to operate the other way around. Now moving forward to that, you've got the forend. Now the, um, the air bottle is contained within this forend which I actually quite like. It's sort of sometimes, especially bullpups, can look a little bit ugly with a great big air bottle sticking out. Completely contained within this forend here, which is quite bulgy as well. It makes it very comfortable actually in your lead hand to hold. And there's more checkering on it again. And then underneath you have a short Picatinny um, accessory rail here for a bipod or a torch or something. Um, the barrel is a full length barrel, um, so you know this is, um, uh, because this is a bull pup, the, the barrel goes right through uh, the rifle to the back here um, for the breech. It's shrouded as well, and then by um, unscrewing the end cap that comes with the rifle reveals a, a UNF thread, a half inch UNF thread that you can put a silencer to. As I said, I believe that the M2, the Rain M2, the current shipping version, has, has an air strip on the end. But again, you can remove that and you'll want to remove that in order to fit a silencer. Now on the, the right hand side here, so that for a right hander, you have a side lever. Um, it's sprung for the first stage, has a nice long drop down handle, and then you pull it back a second stage um, to cock the rifle. Then obviously push it forward to lock at home once you're ready to take a shot. Then you have a, a pressure gauge on the right hand side here, it takes a 232 bar fill, and that will give you, um, well I get about 130 shots from it in 177, uh, and I understand that in 2.2 you get around about 180 shots, or at least that's what's quoted. Um, but certainly yeah, I, I get between 120 and 130 shots in 177, um, which is good because this bottle isn't the biggest bottle in the world, um, now, Umrex says that this rifle is, um, is regulated, and I must admit, I don't know what the regulator um, setup is inside it, um, but certainly when I've had this on the range before and I've chronographed it, um, it is very consistent. You're talking about sort of a 12, 15 uh, uh, foot per second variance over 30 or 40 shots. So whatever the regulator setup is, it would suggest that it works. And then, just above the, the pressure gauge here, let me show you all this stuff in, in close up. You have um, a little plug that pulls out and then your, uh, your filler probe will go in there to fill the rifle up to 232 bar. Now, I don't know if I said this before, if I'm repeating myself, but this side lever uh, will also move around 
to the other side of the rifle um, as well um, to make it, as I say, truly ambidextrous. You have this um, sort of extended um, scope rail up here. Let's say UK spec is apparently a dovetail rail, non-UK is a Picatinny rail. Gives you plenty of real estate to, to mount a scope. Um, I've had sort of regular conventional eye relief scopes on this rifle as well. And you can set up um, eye alignment very nicely. You know, there's plenty of room to get your scope um, set up properly as well. And then I think that's pretty much everything to talk about uh, feature-wise on the rifle. Um, what I'll do is next, I'll, I'll show you the magazine setup in a little bit closer detail. You get 11 shots in 177, 10 in, in 22, and nine shots in 0.25 caliber. Um, and what we'll do is we'll show you the whole filling process and inserting into the, bro in, inserting into the breech process uh, separately. So the magazine on the wall terrain is nice and straightforward. It comprises of this uh, box like type magazine and there's a, an inner wheel or sort of a, a kind of a thumb wheel on either side that rotates the inner chamber uh, and that is sprung. Now there's no need for you to, uh, to put any sort of pretension on the magazine. Uh, you simply drop the pellets into the holes as you rotate that inner circle, sorry, that inner drum um, in a clockwise direction until you fill up all the chambers. Now the 177 magazine takes 11 shots, the 22 takes 10, and the 25 magazine takes uh, nine shots. So you just keep dropping all of those pellets in nose first into those um, chambers as they're exposed and then once you have filled in all the pellets that drum will no longer uh, rotate and now I'll show you how to fit it into the uh, into the breech so I've taken all the pellets out of this magazine now so it's perfectly safe and hopefully if you can see on the front here on the side of the magazine there's an arrow and it actually says uh, front, which is a pretty good hint that you need to put the magazine so that uh, so the arrow is pointing to the front of the rifle or the muzzle end of the rifle. And because this is you know, a really good uh, rifle for, from an ambidextrous perspective, you can either put the magazine into the breech from the right-hand side with that arrow pointing forward in that direction. If you're a right-hander or if you're a left-hander, simply rotate the magazine over so that the arrow is kind of pointing forward from the other direction and you can put it in from the left hand side of the uh, of the breech really good feature that and inserting it is very easy simply pull back the side lever and then i'm right handed so i'm going to put it in from this side put the magazine into the breech push it home and return the side lever filling up the wall terrain with air is nice and straightforward uh, very similar to other rifles as part of your pack, you will receive a fill probe, which is this gold part here. Um, and this silver part is an aftermarket attachment for, for airlines. And the fill port itself is located just above the side lever and the, uh, the pressure gauge. And there's a little, a little um, plastic bung that you, you'll need to pull out. It's um, just like a friction fit and a little O-ring. Pull that out, put that somewhere safe. Take your uh, probe. Insert that into the fill port that's been revealed, push it as far in as it will go. Then obviously you'll need to attach your airline, be that from a, a compressed air bottle or a compressor or a stirrup pump, onto the end of the probe. Give that a 232 bar fill. Then bleed off your airline 
then you can remove the probe and then reinsert this bung to make sure that no dirt or debris gets into the inner workings of the rifle. And that will give you around about 132, uh, sh uh, sorry, 130 shots in 177 or 180 shots in 22 from a 232 bar fill. Well, that's a quick rundown on the Umrex Walther Rain. Next stop is to go down the range, and see how it shoots. So I'll pop down to Reading Air Target Shooting Club once again to put the Walther Rain through its paces. Now I should have said I'm using Air Armors Diablo fill pellets. These are 4.52 size. Now set a target out at 30 meters. Right, let's go and see how we got on. Now, how did we get on? That didn't look too bad from where I was sat. Oh yeah, look at that. Well, just turn that around. Oops, sorry about that. Well, that's not a bad group at all, is it? That's 11 shots of full magazine and that's got to be I should think probably 10 pellets through one hole one sort of pellet size hole really then one maybe two a little bit low down there but that's easily within 10 millimeter uh, 10 millimeters and as I said before that's 30 meters with air arms Diablo field 4.52 millimeter well there you go that's our quick rundown of the Walther Rain 177 caliber rifle this had it on the chrono, 11.43 foot pounds. Very, very consistent too, and mighty accurate as you've just seen. Uh, as I say, retails for 799.95, nice and light. If you can get over the plasticness of the stock, and as I say, I certainly have. Extremely durable, very light, very compact, and I really love this gun. Uh, my go-to gun for ratting and squirrel shooting. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time.